Tuesday and that means it is live crafting with Joe Day and uh, I am on YouTube today so if you are catching this on the replay welcome if you're watching live welcome uh, on the replay let's see today is March oh I gotta turn down my sound March 7th of uh, 2023 so uh, we are sort of trying to get to spring here in uh, central Alberta where I am and if this is your first time uh, following or watching me my name is Joanne Rogers I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in central Alberta Canada and I've been designing with you in mind since 1999. So I'm happy to be here. I have all kinds of ideas. Be sure if you this is the first time following me that you hit the subscribe button because I do have lots of videos. And I also want you to make sure that you get the video when it first comes out. And I want you to get notifications when I'm going live. So it's 1 p.m. Mountain Time here in Central Alberta. We will go to uh, Daylight Savings Time this weekend. So if that's news to you and you live in North America, uh, set your clocks uh, at uh, Sunday night on Mar March 12th. So early, early in the morning. I never get up and do it at that time. Do you do yours before you go to bed or do you do it when you get up in the morning? So that's your question for today. So I am going to show you today five surefire ways, tips, I guess, that you can make handmade cards that they won't forget. So whenever you give them to somebody, they're going to say, that's a fantastic card. Or I remember three years ago, you gave me a birthday card with blah. And they're going to know exactly what was on that card. And they'll, they'll probably even still have it. They may even have the envelope. So this is a great way for you to add lots of little uh, tips and pizzazz to your cards. And there's, I've got five, but I'll bet you there's some bonus tips in here too. So I'm going to turn you down to my desk now and uh, we'll get started. And again, if you are enjoying this, please feel free to share it with your friends, uh, like it. Uh, I would love, that's the best way that you can give me a pat on the back. And I really do appreciate when you do that uh, so that I just know that you are enjoying what I am doing for you. So I'm going to make sure I am in the right place. I can see, I can hear that because, or you heard that, uh, but I'm going to turn you down and we're going to get started right away on our project, which is a super cute project. Um, I think you are really going to like it. If you like tacos, you don't even have to like tacos to like this stamp set. And you don't even have to like Mexican food to like this stamp set. It is just so cute. And that's what we're going to be playing with today. Okay. I'm going to turn you down. So just, uh, watch yourself here if um, if you tend to get a little bit dizzy with the camera here we go let me know what that looks like for you I can see that I have light shining in here on my workstation don't I sorry about that okay so I'm gonna bring you in just a tiny little bit hopefully that works for you um, and we are gonna have, you know I hate to get rid of the light because it's just you know at this time of year, we want it. That's like daylight saving. So you'll probably see that move across my desk as we go. And I'm hoping that that really doesn't impact your, uh, your experience at all. Let me just even bring you in a tiny little bit more here. There we go. Okay. So what are we going to be playing with? I'm going to talk about the tips as I go, and I'm going to show you different ways that you can Amp up your card making. I'm hopefully not going to drop anything here today, but I'm going to start with a piece of our um, holy smokes that just went completely out of my head. Um, Poppy Parade, Poppy Parade, which is a little bit brighter orangey red. So it's not a cherry red, it's not a pink red, it has a little bit of orange in it. And you may have already heard that we are doing, uh, Stampin' Up! is doing a color refresh. Come May, we're going to have different colors available in the catalog. And let me know what you think about that, if you think that that's a good thing or, or not a great thing. But uh, we have no idea as demonstrators at this point what's going to stay and what is going to go. So this is the color that is going to be our main color. And you'll find that as we go through today's project, one of my tips is that you want to use some bold and bright color. That's one of my tips for uh, ways to make your car stand out. So we are going to do what I like to do. I know we see this sometimes on mine, but it really is an easy way to give yourself a fun fold. My piece of paper is four and a quarter by 11. 
I already have it scored at five and a half in the middle, and now I'm also going to score it at two and three quarters. So two and three quarters is actually half of five and a half. So I've got my score line over here. Let me move my cutting blade out of the way. That's the darker uh, blade here. And I'm gonna use the taupe blade to actually give me a nice little score mark. You can press a little bit harder if you have the paper trimmer from Stampin' Up because it doesn't go too far into the paper, but it does give you a good score line. I'm gonna put that aside. And then we are, before we actually fold it back, I'm going to do something to it. So another thing that you like to, that I like to do in order to make some really standout cards is add some texture to it. And so we're gonna do that in a couple different ways, but the first way we're gonna do that is we are going to add some dry embossing. These are two of my favorite in the current annual catalog the stripes and splatters and we're going to use the splatters today on our card but the stripes I just want to show you what that one looks like so these are mini meaning that they are half the half the width really of the uh, larger ones that we have and they fit in the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine so this guy here is the stripes I'm hoping that you can see that I realize I did that on black and that might be a little bit difficult to see but it's not like it's a straight stripe it's almost like it's a brush stroke stroke stripe you try and see that and um, and it is really cool it's a little bit different so these are some of my favorite I'm hoping that these don't get retired and I'm not too sure that uh, that they won't be so I'm going to pull in my stamp and cut and emboss machine here is, here. oh and I'm going to drop that off of there hold on a sec got it and so when you are embossing, this is a, uh, a thick one, meaning that it is a 3D embossing folder, so it's a little bit thicker. And I am going to pull that over just a little bit here. And you need just your, if you look at the pictures on your platform, it is this one here for 3D embossing folder. And we need just the platform, which is number one, and we need number four, which is the gray guy. So that's all we need plus our actual embossing folder. Now, when you have a long one like this, uh, you don't, you don't wanna put it in here because all I wanna do is emboss this part right here. So I don't want this flat, the second piece after the score line to be uh, embossed. So I'm just gonna open up my folder and I'm gonna put this in so that my score line is lined up with the edge. Now, not the edge of the embossing folder, but the, you can see that there are little lines here. It's like the edge ends, oh, maybe not, not even, maybe a 16th or an eighth, 16th, I think, of, the, um, of an inch. And so I'm gonna line this up here in the inside as well with that. I'm gonna pull it down because I want to line it up with those lines down at the bottom. So line it up here means you're gonna be straight. And it doesn't, you know, it's not hugely important at this point because um, this is an all over pattern. But if you had one that you were worried about it being straight, that's what you wanna do, line it up there. Okay, so I did pull this out just a little bit. So I wanna line that up again. It's not the end of the world if you go over that line, but you're gonna put that in this way. So it'll fit in there just perfectly. Usually I always try and have my fold here going this way, but in this case, we're not able to. So we're going to have it go through. You're not going to harm it too, too much by going this way and using the right sandwiches and then just run that through. And you can always hear when it's done going through because it only had a very little bit to go. And when you pull it out, you have your splatters right here. Okay, so we are done with our embossing. Put that back away, out of the way. And now what we're going to do is we're gonna fold back along that score line. And the score line is going to take us right here. Okay, so we're just gonna firm that up with our bone folder. When you have a piece that you are going to see, just be a little lighter with your burnishing so that you don't get a, um, a shiny part. Now on the back part here, I'm gonna go on the back and I can do as hard as I want there and you can maybe see there's a little bit of a shine 
but that's okay. Okay, so we're doing reverse fold. So you got a tiny little bit. It's not too difficult to fold. For, so when the person opens it up in the envelope, they don't have to know anything about a fancy fold in order to understand this card. And that's why one of the reasons why I like it so much. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to take some dies and or a die and it's going to be a large die. So we want something that has uh, some some dimension to it. We want it to have some shape, some different shape to it. That's another one of our tips. And I've taken this one right here, this second one, partly because I like the scalloped edges and I also like the dots, uh, but, but I like the size. So this size here is going to be about three and a quarter by four. And we are going to cut that out of black, which I've already done for us. And that's what you get when you are done. So that's what we're going to use for a little bit of interest. And we are going to layer that. So these pieces of paper are two colors. This is Parakeet Party, which is one of our current in colors. This is Daffodil Delight, which has been in our brights for a long time. One of, uh, one of my favorites. It's such a cheery color. You can see that I'm a little crooked and I'm trying to straighten you up a little bit there. And these are the measurements. So the smaller one is three and a quarter by four and a half. And we are going to glue that down on top of here. And the next one is three and a half by four and three quarters. And that's going to be another layer. So here's where we're bringing in lots of color, except that I've done them the exact same size. So I'm going to have to make this one smaller. Hold on just a sec. So instead of this one being three and a quarter, I think I've made it three and a half. I did. So three and a quarter. So on the fly, here we go. We're gonna make that one smaller. And then I think I also have this at four. That one is four and a half. So I think I've cut my paper wrong. Let's see this guy right here. Nope, that's right. My yellow one was correct. Okay, so you want that to be matted perfectly on there. So my, my little stickies were correct, just my cutting was wrong. And then that's going to sit right on top and give a little bit, okay? So we're gonna glue those down in just a minute. First of all, what we wanna do, we're gonna leave that over here. We're going to emboss, we're gonna heat emboss. And when we heat emboss, uh, we wanna use our embossing buddy and that this is just a little pouch that has some um, uh, some white powder sand rack in it that we put on top especially on dark paper and I have a whole class on heat bossing for paper crafters and it's been one of my most popular classes so if you want to head on over to my website which is designwithjoe.ca you can find some classes there they're all online they're a lifetime you get them forever uh, so and you can watch them when, uh, whenever as well okay so I pulled out of the Taco Fiesta stamp set. I'm going to pull this in a little bit more and talk more about it. Just the one that says, holy guacamole, it's your birthday. This, isn't, this is so cute, this set. But it's even cuter when you start to add some color. Okay, so we're going to use our Versamark pad. We are going to emboss, or we're going to, first of all, stamp it. I have a photopolymer stamp, so I'm going to just put it on top of my stamp and pierce mat. And I'm going to stamp it over in this corner. And I don't want to get my head in there. So I'm hoping that I'm not stamping that uh, crooked at all. Put the lid back on that. Embossing buddy out of the way. Pull in some white. And this is white embossing powder that you sprinkle right over top. Give it a good tap off. A good little flick on the back. And then if you have any little dots around like that, Take a dry paintbrush, a very fine one if you have. I've been using this one for years and I've actually cut it down. So it was a paintbrush that I cut some of the little tips off. And then just get rid of those. Don't try not to go over top of your words because that will also take it off there. So just try and get rid of any of those white. And then we are going to heat it up. We're going to use our heat tool. And our heat tool from Stampin' Up has two settings. We're gonna use the second setting. Number one is for ver um, vellum. Number two is for embossing. So heat it up until you really can't stand it anymore on your hand. And then you're gonna point it right at it. And instead of waving it around, you wanna point it at it and then watch it change. And when it changes from sort of that um, modeled the more the darker white you know that you can just move the 
gun just a little bit. And then once you think you're done, just look at it sort of in the light and make sure it's sort of shiny everywhere. And that one is. So heat embossing is another way that you can add lots of pizzazz. So white on black, so black on top of our colors. So we've got lots of bright colors that really are eye catching. White on black is another tip for adding lots of um, pow and wow to your cards. So we're gonna now put these ones all together using my seal. And my seal works a little bit better on top of my uh, silicone craft sheet. Just seems to run better. And I'm just going to put seal everywhere right on top of the parakeet party and it'll just fit on there perfectly and frame it really well. Doesn't matter if the words are upside down at this point. Put it on top of our daffodil delight. So we're adding layers of color, which adds dimension as well. We've got some texture with our little holes here. We've got some visual interest with our, our scallops. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to put that so it's right in the middle of the card. Just before I do that, I'm going to put on the inside just a piece of our basic white that is four by five and a quarter. So that's just a standard size. And what I do, instead of using a whole bunch of seal for this, I just put one little bit at the top and sometimes I'll forget and do it all the way around, but we don't really have to. So you can get that in there, center it in your card. And now we're going to put this guy right in the middle. So it's framed, your black is framed with two colors, plus your white, and then it's framed again by your card. So lots of really interest, uh, really interesting elements going on there. Now I'm going to use my Tombow liquid glue here, and I don't put my glue onto what I'm gluing down. I put my glue onto what I'm, what I'm going to glue it to. And I know, you're just gonna take an eyeball here. I know that I really don't, I just want my glue sort of to be on this part here. So I can even leave my fingers there if I want. And I just know that my glue needs to go here and then it should stick fairly well. And you can put that down. And again, when you use liquid glue, it gives you just that little bit of wiggle room so that you can get it centered top to bottom and side to side. There we go. Okay, so that really is the structure of your card. Now let's amp it up a little bit more from uh, a color perspective and really make it interesting with this, uh, with this stamp set. So where can you find the stamp set? So the stamp set is in the mini catalog from January to April. And it is, uh, you can always find things at the catalog in a glance. And if you don't know what it is, there's a little, um, what's the resource? I, uh, it's a resource, I guess, at the back. It has a little tiny picture and it tells you, you can tell pretty much this one is a taco. I'll just hold that up a little bit. So it's a taco, so it's on page 48. So I happen to mark that, but that's how you can find it yourself. Now I have to say that looking at the catalog when I first got it, this wasn't a stamp set that I said, yeah, I got to get it. So uh, I've seen lots of wonderful things with it and um, it's really fun as I've been playing with it. You, you would love it too, I know you will. But here is the entire stamp set. There are 23 different stamps in it and you can mix and match and they are two-step stamps. So we are gonna two-step them today, but we're gonna color them too. So what did I say? That's on page 48. Okay, so I have already pulled out and stamped these. So when you're stamping, you want to use thick basic white cardstock and you want to use your tuxedo black memento stamp pad because we are going to be coloring with our stamp and blends. And the stampin', so I've pulled out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different stamps, images, and I also have a spec uh, spectacular this guy right here, well, nope, not that one, this one right here, spectacular, uh, that we're going to use on the inside. And I also have pulled out some of these guys. So these are just different little um, expressions to go onto our different elements. So I'm not going to color all of them today, but I am going to start and I'm gonna show you some ways that you can um, color and use your Stampin' Blends. So I'm going to pull in my 
Uh, this is my parakeet party and another one, which I'll tell you about in just a minute. And I'm going to tell you why I'm using them as well. So what I have here, I have the same color red, which is the Poppy Parade, light and dark. I have Daffodil Delight, which is the same color here, light and dark. I have Parakeet Party here, but I've also pulled in on the yellow side, I've pulled in the So Saffron, which is a little lighter, softer, almost a tiny bit of gray added to it from the brightness of the Daffodil Delight. And I've pulled in the Granny Apple Green, which is a more intense green, but still on that real bright side. So we are going to color. We're going to start with this guy right here. When you're coloring with your blends, you want to color on something because it will come through on the other side. And we're going to start with our Daffodil Delight. So I'm starting with my dark and I'm going to go in circles around the edges and then I'm going to go in lines around the edges. So I just want to create some dark and I'm going to pull that out with a little bit of my lighter. And that's one of the fabulous things about our blends is that they do easily pull out color. So I'm still going in with my circular and it's going to soften the line of that yellow and it's going to be a little bit lighter color. Now, you don't want to go over this ever, forever and ever kind of thing because you can pull your paper if you do it too much. But this is going to allow you just to get some uh, shadows happening in your designs. Okay, so now you can leave it like that or you can go to your bigger tip because this is a fairly large, which is going to be a little bit quicker for you. But I'm going to end there and I'm going to leave that white. And then I'm going to go in with my darker so saffron or with the dark so saffron. And with that, I'm going to continue coloring a little bit. I'm going to blend it out just a little bit more. So I've got the darker there and now I'm going to go in with the light. So it's a way that you can create a little bit more interest with your blends. So sometimes if you know, this is an investment. Your blends are an investment. You want to treat them uh, like you love them. And we know that you do love them. And you just want to use them softly. You want to have lots of color options and, and they, will, they will reward you with beautiful color. So then what you're going to get is a real uh, lightness and darkness of color that's not going to have a really harsh line to it. So now we're just going to put some uh, tomatoes and some lettuce around the outside edge. I'm going to use my bullet tip again. And you can tell that the bullet tip is the narrower. There's a picture of it and there's a narrow line. The brush tip has a thicker line. Because I'm going into a small area, that's why I'm going to use the uh, bullet tip. And I'm just going to go every second one. I'm going to put a little bit of that dark in there just on the, on the left of the image on the left of the tomatoes and I don't know actually maybe I actually just colored the lettuce but it doesn't matter and now I'm going to go in and pull out that little bit darker this is a lighter of the poppy parade now lots of people shy away from stamps like these because there are no dyes that go along with them so yes, you do need to cut them out when you're doing what I'm doing, but it really does really, really, I'm not kidding, make a fabulous um, look for your cards. So now I'm going to go in with the dark um, parakeet party and I'm going to then go in with my light parakeet party and I'm just going to finish it off. Now I'm not going to cut or color all of these because I just wanted to show you that. Now, I did get a little bit of red there. I'm just gonna go back in with my uh, dark um, Daffodil Delight and just see if I can make that, lessen that up just a little bit. And I think I can. So it's gonna have just a, a titch of maybe sort of orangey to it, which is okay. Okay for a taco, right? There. Okay, so that is our taco. Now you can color everything else. If I were doing this guy right here, I would use the dark of the, or the light rather, of the granny apple green. And I can do it on this one just to show you. It's gonna add one shade darker. Okay, so it's just gonna be a little dot 
that you can go in and just pull out and it just creates shadow that's all it does which is really what you're getting is a whole bunch of uh, fun designs there so now this is where the two-step part comes in so I'm going to pull in my memento I would color all of mine first and then I'm going to put on some faces and so the faces that I'm going to put on let me find them here uh, I think maybe we'll put this guy here with the I think this is a lovely one or not lovely so cute okay he's got instantly turns it into a, a taco with personality I think so he is so much fun uh, and we can do the other ones just so that you can see what they are so this one is um, I'm going to put this one maybe on this guy here now they don't have to all be sitting up like that so he's going wow and then this one I think if I got this one right this one is just the happy face yes but there is one other one on here and it is uh, winking he's winking at you let me just see if I can pull him here I didn't pull him out so here he is he's just winking at you which I think is so much fun so okay so those guys we've worked with we are also going to use this spectacular but in just a minute okay so I have done a lot of these already so let me pull them in and we are going to pull them out for our card we're going to need that in just a minute put that back out of the way so I have done some here. We are going to need to put some expressions on these guys' faces. I'm going to need that. I want some lime in there. I want some nacho chips in there. Uh, what else? I think I want a hat to go on that guy. I want a baby little uh, um, hot red chili pepper. But you can see there's other ones here. I'll show you a couple other. There's also a little bowl of guacamole that you can put a face on. There's this guy here we want. So this is a different type. This is like a soft tortilla. We're gonna go for that guy. And then if you wanted to have an avocado, you could have an avocado too. So I wanna show you the two differences in color. So I colored these ones uh, different colors just to show you that you can achieve different colors using or different effects using different colors. So here I used my parakeet and the, around the outside is granny apple green, a little bit of soft uh, saffron, so saffron in the middle and a little bit of crumb cake. And on this one, I did pear pizzazz on the outside and I did soft sea foam. Also with a tiny, the lightest so saffron and uh, the same thing. But you can see the same thing being crumb cake that you can get a totally different set of colors. So whatever appeals to you. So we're not gonna use the guacamole we have, this is uh oh yeah we're gonna use uh i think maybe yeah, i'll cut this guy out so i'll show you how to fussy cut so you need a pair of short shank scissors meaning that this part here is short this is usually what i do is i'll go around and i'll just cut it out so that i'm working with a much smaller piece and then you just want to give yourself a little river of white you want to try and go fairly quick but um, this is a great thing you know make yourself a whole page of these and sit in front of the TV and color and you can even cut them out in front of the TV so that you have a whole bunch that you're able to work with right away this is one of my favorite things to do is to color with my Stampin blends and get these beautiful gorgeous tones of color and if you are uh, watching this and you are a colorer too uh, maybe tell me what you what you like to use the best if you're a stamp and blends person so I was moving I should have been talking about this I was moving this as I went as opposed to moving my hand I was moving what I was cutting more and it just uh, you won't get your hand really tired out doing that okay so now we need a little bit of we're gonna make this guy we got the one here there's a reason why I'm putting this face on a little bit sideways and we're gonna put this guy here happy face guy and I think we'll do will we do happy face here or should we do another ah let's do happy face okay so he's got can you see how that instantly makes them have personality that they are just so much fun okay so I've got that out of the way so now what we get to do is we get to place them 
So I do this through a variety of two ways. One, gluing them straight down and two, using my um, uh, dimensionals. And so it's whatever you like to do, but it's how it's more of those tips. We're creating more um, um, dimension by popping some things up. So I'm just going to place them first of all. I'm going to think about how I'm going to do it. This will be similar and maybe I won't do it exactly the same as my last one. So you want to layer them over top of each other. You don't want to have them all sitting like this as separate pieces. You want them to have a little bit of a, uh, of a cohesiveness so that they look like they are standing on top of one another or in front of each other, which is exactly what they are. So let's put maybe some chips out there. This guy here, so I found that if you want to stand him right up, you have to put the face differently. But I wanted him to go a little bit like this so that you actually see his face. So that's going to go in behind there. They're moving around, but that's okay. Our little lime can go anywhere. I think our little hat is either going to go that way or the other way. This is going to go on the inside and I'm going to see whether I need that or need this. I might need that on the other end. So what am I going to glue down? I'm going to glue down this, this, and this, the, the actual cactus, and then the hat and this guy. Are, and this one are going to be put on with dimensionals. So we're going to glue using our um, Tombow liquid glue. And we're just going to put that guy down. And I'm just going to try and guess where I just had those things. A little bit, I got a little bit of glue happy there. And we're going to put our taco chips down as well. Just a little bit of glue there. So the, this is, you know, this is so cute. You can be a kid, big or old, big or old, big or, big or small kid, and uh, you will love this stamp set. Just because it's so much fun and you can do for birthday, you can do for friend. And I think I'm gonna wait on that one to decide where I'm gonna put it. But these guys here, I'm gonna wait on that guy too, just to see where I need to fill in some spots. So now I'm gonna take my dimensionals, I'm going to use my little guys. I'm going to use my take your pick tool and I'm going to lift these off, put it right here. And I think, am I going to get it on there? I think I'm going to wait on that one. I could use my big ones here, but my small ones are handy. But I could also cut the outside edge of these if I wanted, but this will work just fine. So give yourself, I, I like to use, especially the minis, and I'm not exactly sure, but I like to use my take your pick tool for that. Then when you need to get into a small area where even the mini is too big, just cut yourself uh, some little pieces. So I'm just going to cut like a little one eighth, whoop, and it's going to fly around piece and it'll go right off. So you're going to have to get, use your nails or something else. You take your pick, works here, and put that down. Whoops, I have the wrong side going down. Let me try that. Okay, here we are. Okay, that took a little longer than I wanted it to. Okay, so let's take that. Here's the other one, I found it. Do you ever, that, ever have that happen to you too, where things just go flying off of your table and you have no idea where they went? I do all the time. The other day, yesterday, I lost my, and you wouldn't think there'd be something you would lose, but I lost my um, uh, simple chamois. Okay, so the hat, um, which way do we want the hat to go? I don't want it to go right on top of his head, I don't think. So I'm gonna put it off to the side. Go, put that one off to the side. Then these guys here, now, if you need to get your backings off easily, stick your take your pick tool right into there and we'll go flying off. We'll do that for, yeah, they go flying everywhere. But you can get them out of there. You're going to take this guy. He's going to sit right over top. And when you're putting it down, I, I'm not, I don't really want to put it right here because I want it to be a little bit over top of the taco chips as well but enough so that you can see that they are still taco chips. So lay that guy down. 
This guy's going to go off over here with his face the way it is. And then I think I'm going to put maybe one down here. So put a little dot of glue down. You can use your other end of your take your pick. So the end that has the putty on it to pick that up and lay that down. And then I lost my uh, lime. See? If anybody can see it on here, let me know. But it looks like he's lost. So I might need to pull out. I think I have another one. Let me just see. Do I have another one? I do have another one. I will find that. It'll be attached to something. Okay, and uh, do I need that there? Yeah, I think it is good to add that there actually. So um, just because it's another piece. You could be done here if you wanted, but I sort of like the way this guy looks. So a little bit of black in between, so that. So there we have our card. We're not quite done yet. And then we're also going to do the inside. So we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna glue him right down. Okay, so give a little bit of your liquid glue again. Put that guy here. And then we are going to stamp our spectacular right on top. There we go. I'll try and get that straight again. And I'm sorry if my head is getting in the way. Okay, so holy guacamole, it's your birthday and spectacular. There we go. So I don't think I'm going to put any more in here. I think that that's probably enough. I could do something up there, but I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it like that. So there's your card. So we had tips on coloring, uh, or some of you, some of the tips were coloring, definitely. So lots of color, lot bright color, bold color, lots of contrast between the white and the black and the bold colors. There it is, because I had glue on it. That's why. Um, and then, so that was one, you want texture, you want dimension. We put our heat embossing in there so it makes you wanna reach out and touch it. And now we're going to put on some embellishments. So the embellishments we're going to use are the classic matte dots. And the classic matte um, have white, um, vanilla or cream, gray and black. And you can see that I've used a lot of my black, but we're gonna use white today to go along with the white here. And so we have, we're going to repeat the white three times. So white is here, white is here, little bits of white here, but you've got three, two main things. So now we're going to give it more. So I'm going to pick up a big one. Now you can do it two ways. You can pick it up using the putty. I like to do it with the end. And we're gonna stick this guy right in here. And we're gonna do a small one here. So I'm gonna pick it up again. I have not had much luck getting these. And I think we will put one up here. And we're gonna put another guy up there. Maybe over here, over here. Um, this is the hardest part always, right? Is this the, is it always the third one that is your most difficult? So you wanna create a little bit of a triangle if you can. So I've got one here, one here. I can put one down here. I can put it down here. And I think that is where I'm gonna put it. So it just looks like a natural spot for me to put one. I could put it over here too. And that's a long triangle, but I think I'm gonna put it here. Okay, so there is your card. So lots of different tricks that uh, they are going to never forget this particular card. And I'm going to just show you the one that I had made as a sample. And it's just slightly different. Okay, so I've got got a little a few more chips there I actually just cut one of those chips out there's a little bit different setup so our our jalapeno is in the background same guy though and this one here is the winking one okay and then on the inside i think uh, yeah so i put him here so this one is that you're not your average your nacho average friend and you spice up my life. So those are a bunch of tips and two, I hope you enjoy them, cards so that you can make some spectacular cards yourself. And uh, thank you very much for joining me today. And I will, this will be on my blog. If you like projects like this, please like this video and subscribe so that you always get them. And then go to my, this URL to download a free tutorial. So if you're not currently on my email list, I'd love to have you sign up 
up there. Join in because, let me see, you probably can't even see that. Let me pull that down a little bit. Um, because I send out weekly emails with tips and tricks. They're not very long. I give you lots of information about what's going on with Stampin' Up! If there's any specials. And can you see that? Let me just see. I'm, I'm just, there's always a delay. So let me just see if that's, you can even see it. So I apologize for that. Yes, you can see it. So that is perfect. So www.designwithjoe.ca forward slash join Joe's email. And I would love to have you join in. Thanks very much. We'll see you guys again. Bye-bye.